To solve a simulation problem, a numerical solver is required. As we know, there is a time associated with the solution as well as the compute resources that are required in order to solve the problem. So, what are the important considerations for solving a simulation problem? What is the value in solving quickly? What impacts the computational time of the solution? How can one speed up the solutions? In this lesson, we will explore these concepts and address these questions. First of all, let's explore the concept of design studies and how this relates to computational resources. How do we know our part design is the right shape? Is it optimally shaped or shaped that way because, well, it has always looked that way. So that's why we make them like that. Is it shaped that way because the method of manufacture that's historically been used restricts how it can be created. Simulation allows us to explore the design space, unleashing the power of what if. Let's use this bell crank for our discussion. A bell crank is commonly used in aviation as a means for transferring control system movements from the pilot to the control surfaces of the aircraft. Now looking at the shape, we can see these regions that have cutouts and they're there basically to save weight. But if we design it like that, how do we know it's optimally shaped? We may have designed these cutouts to save weight, and knowing a CNC milling machine can easily cut these out, we won't have issues to manufacture the part. But what if we wish to leverage the power of a computer to run dozens to thousands of design variations looking for the best design, which might be still stronger and lighter, and yet perform the desired function? Here we run three variations of a design and we change the fillet radius and added cutouts to reduce stress and mass respectively. Notice how by increasing the radius of the fillet, the stress decreases. So by having a simulation model that runs quickly per design variation, we can explore dozens to hundreds or thousands of designs in a given day. This is why a fast solution time can be of value to the engineer. Now on the same line of thinking, advances in topology optimization solutions and the ability to actually 3D print organic shape designs out of a polymer or a metallic alloy, this allows designs that could be manufactured just years ago to be manufactured and it's led to a revolution in product designs. We can instruct the simulation to reduce the mass by the desired amount while still maintaining specific design criteria and the simulation will try to provide the optimal shape for one or more loading conditions. Here a starting point for the bell crank is provided and we can now see a new design that removes 50% of the mass results. Similarly, we repeat the simulation for a suspension arm and we notice the highly organic design that results which can easily be 3D printed. So how does this relate back to our conversation on solving? By making a model that can be run dozens to hundreds of times in a given period of time, more design studies and deeper understanding of our design can take place. So what are the considerations for making a model that runs quickly? What impacts the solution time? Typically, the mesh count, but more specifically, the number of degrees of freedom of the model. The more nodes, the more degrees of freedom, and the longer the solution time. The element type used in the model also affects the solution time, where higher order elements pack more nodes and hence more degrees of freedom for each element. What else impacts the solution time? If the model is linear or nonlinear. Now, nonlinearities such as material nonlinearities or nonlinear contacts, large displacement, etc., need to be solved with a nonlinear solution method which we will discuss in our next section. In addition, what else impacts the solution time? The number of discrete, distinct loading steps or environments the part will see. Since for each loading environment, the simulation model will typically need to be resolved. And of course, compute resources available will impact the solution time. The solvers are paralyzed, so the more CPUs or even GPUs and high-speed I.O. 
the faster the solution time. So let's take a moment and talk about nonlinear simulation models in the context of solution time. Some examples of nonlinear models are shown here, such as cold rolling of a metal, which has contact plasticity, large deformation as their nonlinearities. A stent deployment simulation has similar nonlinearities, but also has hyperelasticity of the vessel. Even a model like concrete cracking, which again has similar nonlinearities, but here it also has a specific material model to simulate the brittle behavior of concrete. Solving all these simulations requires the solver to iterate, and the matrices need to be reformulated and solved multiple to thousands of times, depending on the degree of nonlinearity. The total time for the solution will roughly be the time per iteration, which includes the solving of the system matrices, times the number of iterations. It's important to note that the number of iterations required to solve a problem will be a function of the degree of nonlinearity of the problem, and it's not user specified, but rather is a result or byproduct of the nonlinear solution method. We will discuss this in detail in our next section. Now, what are the hardware options to solving a simulation problem? The solution can be performed on local individual desktops or laptops. They can also be solved remotely on a server, a compute cluster, or in the cloud with access to more GPUs, CPUs, memory, disk storage, etc. Finally, the solution can even be performed using distributed computing across a mix of multiple workstations, clusters, desktops, or laptops, all running different operating systems. So what are some of the general recommendations? If the focus is to get results quickly, turn around numerous design studies, or optimization in a short period of time, starting with a linear model instead of nonlinear model if you can. Simplify the assumptions to remove the nonlinearities if possible. Start with a coarser mesh model and later refine to improve the accuracy. Consider using 2D elements or beam and shells versus 3D continuum elements. Utilize point masses to account for mass when the detailed deformations of that region of the model are not necessary. And of course, add computational resources CPUs, GPUs, faster disk, such as solid state drives, to shorten the solution time. This will enable the exploration of design variations. Now, if accuracy is more important, then by all means, include the necessary nonlinearities that capture the true physical behavior. Refine the mesh as needed to converge the results, i.e. mesh convergence studies. Use the most representative element topology to capture the model behavior without approximations. And finally, as it comes by no surprise, add additional compute resources, as we just mentioned, to shorten the solution time. It is often a great recommendation to start simple and build complexity, especially if you're new to simulation, and especially for nonlinearities. We often say crawl, walk, run as we gain experience in understanding of our simulation models.